Inventory continues to grow, but it's interesting. The condo market continues to get weaker, which is a huge win for buyers. Meanwhile, the single family market's inventory gains stay in pace with last year's. So that market, it's staying consistent. To say it another way, that market isn't getting any weaker or any stronger when compared to last year. Confused? Fair enough. Let's get into the numbers and the data and try to unpack this all. Oh, and interest rates had a huge surge. Ah, uh, what happened to our awesome rates and why? And since we're going to be talking about rates, we are going to also talk about how the Fed screwed up and, well, quite frankly, just screwed us all. In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update and we're going to talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Want to save thousands, possibly tens of thousands of dollars on your home purchase? Then reach out. Let's talk about the purchase power plan. Let's jump into the single family market stats. Another big surge in inventory. We now have 5,903 single family homes on the market. That is 9.8% more homes on the market than just 28 days ago. We'd have to go back to the week of July 27th of 2020 in order to find a time when we had more than the current amount of inventory on the market. That week, we had inventory levels of 5,925 units. Now, I don't think we're going to hit the inventory high of 2020, which was 7,039 units, but I think it's safe to say that we're going to cross over that 6,000 unit mark. The year over year inventory levels are at about the same pace as 2023, but are outpacing 2021 and 2022. We now have 1,315 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year. This spread has actually pulled back just a little bit from the 1,371 unit gap high. We have 468 more houses on the market when compared to 2022, which is also a year-long high. A little bounce back in new listings this week, which makes a little sense because it's Columbus Day weekend. Next weekend, we listed 1,184 single-family houses last week, which was 259 additional houses that were compared to the same week back in 2023. New listings activity actually increased by 28% this week. That four-week rolling average, that was 1,259 units. Under agreements also came in a little higher this week. We put 1,050 single-family homes under agreement. This is 222 units or 26.8% more than the same week last year. We put 828 houses under agreement. That four-week rolling average, that's 972 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 28% while under agreements were up by 26.8%. This pending new listing ratio is up. The ratio of 98% is compared to the 84.2% that we saw this week last year. What this means is that nearly 98% of all the properties that came on the market two weeks ago went under agreement last week. There are 542 single-family homes that closed this week for an average sales price of $831,000 and a median sales price of $640,000 sales levels compared to the same week last year. We're up by 72 units or 15.3% as there are 470 single-family houses that sold last year for an average sales price of $852,000. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. The closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. Now, months of inventory shows us if the market's improving or if it's getting weaker year over year, as it takes into account new listings and under agreements. This week, months of inventory came in at 1.81 months from last week's 1.82 months. The 1.81 months this week is compared to the 1.48 months this week last year. And the gap between this year and last year is 0.33 months. Months of inventory differences over the last four weeks, that gap, right, is 0.33 months this week, 0.35 months last week and the week before that, and then 0.33 months four weeks ago. In other words, this is weaker than last year, but the amount of weakness has stayed consistent over the last month. This is a very different story, the condo market. So stay tuned. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it'll be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We now have 3,307 condos on the market as money. This means that there's 13.4% more inventory in the market today than the inventory levels of just 28 days ago. This was the highest that inventory has been since December 7th of 2020, when we had 3,521 condos on the market. We now have 781 more units on the market today than today last year. 518 more units compared to the inventory levels of 2022, and 350 more units than in 2021. There are 561 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 636 units. The 561 units was 153 units, or 37.5% more than the 408 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. What's interesting is that we continue to break away from the 2022 trend lines. We first stepped out of this range about three weeks ago, and it just continues to move go on. 
This week, we put 390 units under agreement that 390 condo sales at 16 units or 4.3% more than the 374 condos we put under agreement this week last year. That four week rolling average, that's 418 units. So 37.5% more listings came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling only 4.3% more condos. The condo pending to new listing ratio continues to be level. This week's pending new listing ratio is 73.4%, and this is compared to 76.6% that we saw this same week last year. There were 219 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $643,000 and a median sales price of $515,000. Same week last year, there were 177 condos that sold with an average sales price of $571,000. So sales levels, they were up by 23.7%. Here's the set is really telling about the overall health of the condo market go, though. Months of inventory increased to 2.57 months this week compared to 2.52 months that we saw last week. We recorded 1.97 months of inventory levels this week last year. The year over year inventory gap increased to 0.6 months. So what's been the last trend line for the last month, the last four weeks? Well, this week it was 0.6 months and then 0.54 months last week, then 0.48 months and 0.45 months of a year over year inventory gap in weeks three and four. Like I said, the condo market continues to get weaker, which is phenomenal news to condo home buyers. And Chip, you can do me a huge favor. Can you hit that like button right down there? Because believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channel as it just plays with that YouTube algorithm while subscribing. And if you're liking the content, then I truly appreciate you considering subscribing because that one doesn't hurt either. Time to talk about interest rates. Yeah, take a look at that. Interest rates are way up. Two month highs as a matter of fact. So what the heck happened? Glad you asked. Job data last week came in strong, very strong. And this means the economy wasn't in the tough spot the Fed said it was. But we're going to get more of that in just a second. The good economic news decreased the likelihood of future rate hikes and the amount the Fed is going to cut rates. Hence, the markets are reacting to us and seeing a bounce in interest rates. But here's the interesting fact. When you dug into that phenomenal job report a little bit more, you notice that half of all the hiring came from the government. So the government's doing more hiring, which means they are also doing more buying because, well, we're already broke and more borrowing and more spending leads to higher inflation. I made my case as to why the Fed shouldn't cut. And if they did cut, then it should be 25 basis points. I'm on the record on that one. The Fed, they screwed up. They cut 50 basis points too early, caving to political pressures. Oh, and I'm actually on the record way earlier this year saying the Fed, they were going to cut before the elections. Cheap money, it's like a cheap drug. It feels good. Well, any drug, as a matter of fact. It feels good, but it just ruins you. Cheap interest rates feel good in the economy, but in the long term, make for a weaker economy as the economy becomes less focused on productivity. You want a strong economy? You want strong real income growth? Then you want an economy that is focused on productivity gains, not cheap money. I've said it before, and I just want to put it on the record again. Inflation is going to come back, and it's going to come back hard. In the last two weeks since they made that Fed cut, the commodity index is up 11%. Those prices track things like steel, lead, oil, gas, wool, corn. These are input costs for all the goods that we use every day. If commodity prices rise, then it has to transition over to consumer prices. These guys, they don't care about us on Main Street. They only care about the folks on Wall Street. And Wall Street, they love free money. I just wanted to say that it's nice that we can all focus on this stuff. We're, we're just truly blessed. My thoughts and prayers are with the brothers and sisters whose lives have been upended and are just focused on surviving right now. And then there's hurricane number two that is getting ready to barrel down Florida. Let's hope and pray that this storm will lose a lot of steam as it comes closer to land and will cause minimal damage and despair. So our prayers are with you guys. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell them in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.